Welcome back to the Crimson Metal Show on KXOU here on the beautiful campus of the University of Oklahoma. On the phone, I have Thorsten Bauer from the German symphonic metal band Leaves Eyes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Hey, uh, you guys got this new album out, and uh, like like King of Kings, your previous album, and going as far back as Vinland Saga and uh, even Lovelorn with uh, you know the songs like Tale of the Sea Maid, the new album, Sign of the Dragon Head, has a Viking theme. So I yeah. often wonder about bands like, you know, Ailstorm, you know, who sing not, about nothing but pirates. You know, at what point are they going to run out of, of material to write about? Uh, do, do you have this concern, you know, and, and how is this new album different from uh, the predecessors? Um, I think the, um, the concept of Lee's Ice has always been dealing with our North, North mythology and also our Nordic landscape. Um, already in Love Lorna, like you said, Vinland Saga. Um, and we also had a lot of medieval themes, like on the Meredith album. So uh, we don't feel it's something that we are uh, fed up with or something that we have said everything. It's uh, also here in, um, if you're in Germany, especially northern Germany, where we also um, shot the video for Sign of the Dragon Head and Across the Sea. It's, you can see the, the traces, and um, it's everything still alive, right, in a way. Mm -hmm. so the, the Nordic culture is still there. And uh, it's, what is also fascinating, it is something which is a little bit um, exotic to a lot of people, because Central Europe has become uh, very um, influenced by Christianity and also the Roman Empire. And at the same time, it's so close. So basically, it's in our DNA, and we can rediscover a little bit our own heritage. For example, a lot of people from my family, they come from the area of Schleswig, which used to be the big Viking trade uh, base Haithabu. And also, uh, Alex Anchesters, they're from the area where the Jomsburg Vikings were hailing from. Okay. So it's a really cool way to deal with... Um, the area that we're sitting in, how it used to be uh, centuries ago. Okay. Um, now, I got to see you guys, I got to see Leaves Eyes and Atrocity in Kansas City back in 2014, I think it was, and uh, with Moonspell. Oh. <laughs> and then I, Moonspell, yeah. Yeah, I got to see you guys again this past summer with Battle Beast and Sabaton in Dallas. So yeah. Uh, yeah. how would you compare those two tours, you know, any differences? How do you... How do you feel about you know the, your, your two different tours that you've you've uh, you've done now in the U.S. and uh, uh, are we going to see Atrocity again open for Leaves Eyes? <laughs> um, yeah, for the first question, I've, I've, we, we've done uh, several tours um, in the U.S. The first one in 2005, um, we did tours with Camelot and Blind Guardian. You're right, also Moonspell, and uh, now with Sabaton and Sonata Arctica. So what was definitely similar, or the same thing, on the 2014 ride with Moonspell and the one with Sabaton, we had the same tour bus. It was exactly the same tour bus. I even had the same bunk. <laughs> oh, very nice. So um, uh, what was a bit different on the Moonspell tour, we started in the south. We started off in Puerto Rico. And we played uh, 70,000 tons of metal, went through the south. And when the tour was ending, there was snow chaos everywhere in February 2014. And we were flying out two days later. And now the Sabaton run was amazing. It was uh, more of outdoor weather. So we had basically, we, we didn't spend much time in the backstage rooms. We spent most of the time outside of the venue doing barbecue. So that was really amazing. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of pictures of me sitting somewhere in the sun with sunglasses and PBR and we swinging the guitar. So it was a perfect tour. And um, I have to say that the one with especially Sabaton and Battle Beast um, was, was just amazing. It was maybe one of the best tours we ever did. But also the, the Moonspell one run was great. Of course, more demanding for us because we played with Leaves, Ice, and Atrocity, and that can be a bit demanding sometimes. Right, <laughs> you got to you got to do and, two full uh, yes, sets. There is um, 
um, Atrocity is, um, has just released an EP, Masters of Darkness, and in summer we will come up with a new album. So you can expect a new Atrocity album in July, and then we will also do a lot of touring for Atrocity. All right, great. Um, now, last year I, I also had a chance to talk with Lips from uh, the band Anvil, and he, yeah. com- he commented that in Europe, metal is a way of life, while in the U.S. and America, it's a passing fad. Is that a fair statement? Uh, how would you compare, you know, shows in Europe to, to the shows you have you have here in the in the U.S.? Yeah, um, and you can say one thing that the metal scene has always been very much alive. There, there was a time, like let's say maybe in uh, 2000, where especially in the bigger cities, it was a hard time for metal, but it, it was always alive in a way. Maybe not mainstream, but it has always had a flourishing underground. I think one of the problems we have now is um, it is a very flourishing scene with a lot of um, different sub But here in Europe, there are so many festivals now, which is great because you can see all bands, but the people are also a little bit spoiled, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so because everybody can see all bands, and then uh, people have to uh, wonder, mm, where do I go now? Where do I still have the money to go? So we always love to, to play in places uh, where the people are still waiting and they are excited to see a show. And that is definitely in the U.S. And what I also like about the U.S. is that uh, metal is not that much uh, divided into sub So if the band kicks ass, the people go for it. If they feel something, then they go for it. No matter if it's a woman singing, if the guitars are down-tuned, or if it's like uh, uh, some costumes or whatever, I think that's very cool about uh, the U.S. band. Okay. I really like that. Now, um, most most of you are from different countries. Uh, yeah. How do you guys collaborate over, over such distances, uh, and what kind of technology do you guys use to to yeah. uh, make it make it easier? Basically, we don't use much technology. I don't like that. I, I prefer to um, play and jam with uh, real people. So what we do is we always have times where we meet and times where we're not here. We have an own recording studio, but we also do our uh, album recordings. And um, the next show, for example, is uh, a festival at the beginning of April. And then we just meet them and everybody has to come. Um, Elina is living in London, our singer. Uh, Joris, our drummer, he's from um, Netherlands. And Pete, our other guitarist, he's from Switzerland. And Alex and me, we are here based at our headquarters. Right. We're here and waiting for it. <laughs> right. <you> could say. <laughs> now, now, speaking yeah. of your recording studio, since it's, yeah. it is German and you're in Germany, yeah. I and as yeah. a professional audio engineer myself, Mm-hmm. Pro Tools or Steinberg? <laughs> That's a good question. We are, we are using Pro Tools for quite <laughs> a long time. Um, and um, since there was maybe also um, quite a, a change. When did we change that? I think 2010, we went from PC to Mac because when you do these very huge uh, productions, it's... Um, uh, I think a, a better system. But I, I like a lot of features of the Pro Tools, uh, especially if you do rock music. I think it's a really good program. Okay, so but I'm not saying others are not great either. It's just that we we have a good way. We, we found a system and a way how to work with this. Right, right. Well, I, I was curious because, you know, here in the U.S. we use a lot of Pro Tools, but, you know, Steinberg is a German yeah. company. That's true. So, yeah, yeah. That's true. So uh, uh, it, it all depends on which kind of plugins you're also using. So there are many, many pros and cons uh, how to how to deal with it. And basically, you just need a, a working setup. And uh, obviously, when we have songs like "Waste of Euphoria," where you end up with hundreds of tracks for that song, right? You need a very powerful and solid system. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I'm yeah. a, I'm a Pro Tools Mac guy, so I'm I'm right on Great. board with That's you. A, Perfect. That's the way we work too. <laughs> okay. Um, my family name is Flansburg. 
And it, it comes from my ancestor, Jan Janssen van Flensburg. So obviously yeah. my ancestor is from the German city of Flensburg. Now, yeah. it is my understanding that when Germans are forced to go to Flensburg, it's not necessarily a good thing. That, <laughs> that maybe you've been a, you've been a bad true. driver. Uh, yeah, it's true, exactly. We have the, the central registration. If you're a bad driver, if you get speed tickets, you collect points, and the points are all stored in Flensburg. <laughs> yeah. So so have you ever had the displeasure of, ha- of being sent there? Uh, we played already in Flensburg, too. We played shows in Flensburg. Um, but usually you only get, like, um, your kind of survey or your record from Flensburg. Yeah. So, so as soon as you say Flensburg, a German will most likely... The first two things he will uh, connect with is, ah, okay, the, so, uh, so you, the what, driving record. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're a good driver. I'm, um, I'm good at parking huge trucks. That's no problem for me. And <laughs> all in all, I'm rather a slow driver. If we need to get from A to B very quickly, I usually, if we drive on our own ourselves, okay. then I usually step away from the steering wheel, but I'm, I'm rather going for the safe. I, I don't collect much points because it's just too fucking expensive to do um, if you have to do a course it costs a hell of money. <laughs> right, right. Oh, so uh, can we expect to see Leaves Eyes in Oklahoma City or at the very least Dallas again soon? I'm very sure about that. Um, we are now uh, gearing up and doing a European tour and then another one and also festivals. And uh, then we're already uh, checking uh, for tours and shows in the U.S. and North America. So we will definitely come back. I can guarantee that, yeah. Okay. Um, And uh, last question. Um, So there's been a lot of conversations about women in the media recently. For instance, uh, the Ukrainian band Gingers, their bassist, Eugene Kostyuk, he said in a recent interview that he doesn't see the point in differentiating a band by gender of the front person, and he doesn't like the division that the label female fronted has caused in metal music. Mm-hmm. In, in addition, Visions of Atlantis vocalist Clementine Delaney said women have proven that they belong to the metal world as much as they want to and as much as men do, but having a so-called pretty face is still required by the audience. Um, how do you... How do you feel about that? Do, do you think that uh, you guys are received differently with a female lead, or and what advantages or different disadvantages are there to having a female lead? And, and you know, how is this yeah. different in metal having a female lead? Yeah, um, for us, what what always comes first is of course the music. And um, if somebody sounds great, I, we also work here, for example, with Duro Pesh. When somebody has great voice. It's if you hear how she's singing, for example, Doro Pesh, it sounds very much like a blues singer in a way. Mm-hmm. It sounds almost like Bon Scott, so that's, that's the perfect thing. It's, for me, I think it's just about the, the music. Uh, we also had now in the past, um, not only Elina, but we also had um, a female tour manager and obviously also Battle Beast that were in our bus. Um, they have a female vocalist. So for us, it's not a big deal. It's more like um, you should accept that's what we do, that uh, if you are in a band with a woman, of course, um, you give them more space and also take care of that they can uh, dress up um, in a private way. And um, so that there is a, that's maybe a difference, but it's not like a difference in a way that we're dealing with... Um, let's say, um, any kind of, um, yeah, how can you say, um, classic role themes or anything. So everybody has to, to say as much uh, as he wants to, and there is not like um, any kind of role aspects that we have to go with it. I mean, Elina, is, uh, she can do ballads, for example, but she's also a very strong performer. Mm-hmm. Also the same for the Battle Beast Singer Noah. So um, I think in general, uh, also when I grew up as a metal fan, when I was 13 or 14, um, the boys and the girls, they wore basically the same. Like you had to wear leather and denim, you had spikes and long hair, and you were headbanging. 
I think that's also something very cool about the meta scene that it's most of the time um, very, um, it does make a, a big difference between women and uh, men. But on the other side, you also have to deal with maybe the thing with, with hierarchies. Like, let's say there are booking agents, there are managers, there are record companies, and of course, these institutions are often male dominated. So uh, the question makes sense, but for us as a band, we don't have, a, we don't see any, we, we don't treat anybody different. If we treat anybody different, then it's in a better way because, like, uh, let's say Lina uh, usually gets when we have a hotel tour, a single room, and we uh, want to make sure that she can stay in a good shape with her voice. Right. And um, I think that it's, it's more about uh, respect that everybody needs. So right, right. In the end, we're all humans. Yeah, so Absolutely. That's how it should be. Yeah. I, can, I can tell you from my own experience, when I was in a female-fronted band with my wife, and we were, we were mm-hmm. doing small little tours, you know, on the weekend, we ended up having to spend more time stopping at places where she could shower. When it was just all guys, <laughs> yeah. we would go for days without showers. But with yeah. with the female in the band, it was up. Oh, we got to have it. We got to stop and get showers every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, thank you very much, Thorsten. Um, I was going to ask you another question, but I've just lost it. It was uh, oh oh <laughs> I I remember what it was. I you know with that flowing red mane of yours, do you ever get confused with uh, Dave Mustaine? I did. I did very often, uh, especially when I was 18. I almost looked like Dave Mustaine, not on purpose, but it just uh, was the way I was looking. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had one uh, woman. She, I, I, I made, played a little trick on her. She, she asked me if I was, um, uh, if I was in Dave Mustaine's family. I said, yeah, yeah, and his half brother, and she, she, she really believed it. So you <laughs> can come up with some stories. <laughs> very, very nice. So. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, um, well, for me, it was always nice. It's always also something when we talked about women as a redhead, you, you can get mobbed as a kid. It was for me good to have somebody like Dave Mustaine who was a redhead and as pale as me. Right. Like, okay, if this guy is making it, uh, uh, it gives me also confidence to, to play music and play guitar. So that was a good thing for me. Very nice. So, um, I guess that's the end. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, thank you very much for the interview, and uh, I hope you enjoy the new album, and uh, we will definitely come back to tour in the U.S. Some of our best memories and the live shows have been in the U.S., and we always love to, to be in your country. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Thorsten, for your time, and good luck on your tour. Thank you very much.